Hello and welcome to the first Dither Boy video tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get this cool dancing dither effect on your images using After Effects and then Dither Boy. You can substitute After Effects in this tutorial for any video software, really. We're not doing anything complicated. So just Dither Boy and your preferred video editor or After Effects type software will do. And we don't need any footage either. We're just going to use an image. So before I go into what I'm going to make and what steps to take. If you're new around here, Dither Boy is an all-in-one live image and video dithering software. It's not a plugin, it's a fully standalone one-time purchase software and we just added video in a free update. So this means that if you already have Dither Boy, I've emailed the video version to you for you to install at no extra cost all included in your original purchase. There's no subscription fees or anything like that. And we're gonna be updating it throughout 2025 with new features. If you wanna know more about Dither Boy, I will leave all the links in the description. And to get straight into the tutorial, I'm already in After Effects to start with, and I've got a 2160 by 2700 composition open. I'm just going for this because I'm going to be posting these on Instagram. You can go for whatever you want. And I'm just going to drag in some images. So if you are not working in After Effects, just whatever software you end up in, put your images in and just sort of scale them to wherever you like. I'm going to be putting a couple of images in just so that I've got plenty to work with and like show you when we're done. But yeah, so I've got three images here and then I'm just going to pull up my timeline here. You can see they're all in the separate layers. So I'm going to go right click new adjustment layer and then in effects and presets. If you are in After Effects, by the way, I just go to window and come down to here effects and presets and just make sure that's ticked to get this box open. And I'm going to type in noise and drag in a turbulent noise onto my adjustment layer. You'll see you get these clouds that come up on the image. And then from here, if you just press the Alt key, left Alt on your keyboard and click on this little stopwatch for evolution, and I'll pull the timeline back up again. You'll see there's an expression here for the turbulent noise. So for this, we're just going to use a wiggle expression, which is if you're new to writing expressions for After Effects, wiggle is like the, it's like the most overpowered one and the most simple one that you learn first. I love using wiggle in everything. So when you use wiggle, it'll prompt you with the brackets, but don't click on anything. Just type wiggle, open bracket. Then you're going to enter two numbers separated by a comma. These numbers are the frequency and the amplitude of your wiggle. So frequency is how many times are we going to wiggle this value per second? And amplitude is how far we're going to wiggle this value, like how far in the spectrum. So for this, it's evolution and it's angular values. So it doesn't, you won't notice like a massive difference with something like this. I'm just going to put two comma 360 and then don't press enter or anything else. Just click out of that box and it'll apply. If you've got any expression errors, sometimes you'll get like a little bar that comes up like here. Just make sure you use like the right syntax it's called. So just make sure there's no space. Make sure you use the right brackets. Make sure you use two numbers and a comma and make sure you spelled wiggle right. If when you started typing it, you'll get like temporal wiggle or wiggle second. Make sure you've not clicked any of those and just go for regular wiggle and whatever numbers you want. So a two and 360 is what I went for. Sorry, I didn't mean to make this an After Effects tutorial, but this is just a quick and easy way to generate this pattern that's gonna move around and we can just blend with a blend mode like overlay onto our images. So if I go back to the first image I pulled in, which is this helmet, and just sort of make this a little bit more viewable for you. If I now pull around the playhead, you'll see, I don't know if it comes across in the video, but you'll see really subtly sort of in these metal sections and places where the noise is blending in, we've got some movement now. So this obviously looks weird and stupid as an animation itself, but now if we go and render this out and put it into Dither Boy, you will get the dots or whatever pattern that you get sort of dancing around in this section. So obviously do whatever you want with the noise. You can go and change the fractal type and all sorts of stuff in here if you want. I'm just going to render this out in Adobe Media Encoder. So at this point there might be a weird cut because I don't know if this is going to crash. But so mine rendered out fine for the helmet. So I'm going to use the helmet and then I'll show you the others that I get as well at the end of the video. So now we've done the noise through After Effects. If you come into Dither Boy now, as you can see, you can now resize Dither Boy. But the first thing you're going to do is go to help and click on expert mode. 
So this is gonna turn off some limits that are for video. The reason there are limits here, if you are an animator or if you work with videos, you'll understand why we put a limit here. But basically, if you if you mess up a video, you can very easily turn like a 10 second clip from your iPhone into a 10 gigabyte file. And obviously, Dither Boy is primarily for dithering. We are not like I'm not this is not going to be as robust as like Media Encoder or DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro or anything like that. So don't import anything insane into Dither Boy because it probably won't work. But everything that you can import without the expert mode on will work. So anyway, just turn it off for this because this is only simple, so it should be fine. Next, instead of using the import button, we're going to go file video and import video. And you probably get a little pop up that says extracting frames. And you can see here that it says we're editing a file called frame 000001. That's because what you are going to do is apply the dither effect to the first frame of the video. And then when we export, the other boy will put together the rest of the frames from your settings on the first frame, basically. So if you edit, if you're a video editor and you're editing footage, or if you're working with something more complex, that's not just a static image, when you load the video in, if it looks weird, it's just because it's loading the first frame in. So from here, if you've used the boy before, you're probably familiar with what you want to do here, set up whatever you want to set up. I'm going to, I think for an Atkinson dither because it's a little bit more responsive to the threshold. And obviously in our After Effects version, we didn't mask and we only used the blend mode overlay. So there's going to be some movement all the way up here in the top left and, you know, off of the helmet. So I'm going to use the luminance threshold just to isolate the helmet and the chainmail. And then I'm just going to use the contrast to sort of reduce the density here. So that way I can up the scale and just like find sort of a sweet spot where you can still see it's a helmet, but we're going to be able to see the dots like dance around. Basically, you don't want to go so fine like this, where it's just going to look like noise on your footage, but you don't want to go so big that you can't see that it's a helmet or whatever you're dithering. Yeah, just find the sweet spot that works for you. So I'm going to go scale a bit more contrast, whatever, mess around until you're happy. Sometimes blur helps even things out a little bit. But anyway, when you're done and you're happy, just go to file, video and export video. I'm going to do that now. Sometimes it makes my recording skip. So I will cut until when the video is exported. So you get the little processing frames box. And this is just the boy going through with your settings and applying the settings to each of the frames. And there we go. So video export complete. And just to prove it works, I'll obviously edit it in at better quality as well. But as you can see, when I play this now, the dots are all dancing around as a result of this turbulent noise we applied. Now, just as a little tip for if you are working with footage or if you want to do things that are a bit more complex with video in Ditherboy, having this be the first frame, obviously it's very convenient for this, but for a lot of footage, the first frame might not be the easiest one for you to apply your dither to. So from here, as you can see, I've got an Atkinson dither, scale eight, contrast 35, blah, blah, blah. Rather than having to remember that, if I go to adjustments, presets, and just click save preset here, and I'll just name it helmet tutorial preset. Now, if I go back to presets, you can see I've got some random ones in here, but it saved my helmet tutorial preset. So if I now like just mess with this and ruin the effect, basically go back to adjustments, presets and click on the helmet tutorial preset. It'll restore these settings. So this way, if you've got a more complex video, you can go and isolate a frame where you want to add the dither effect as a JPEG, bring it into dither boy, construct your effect how you want it, save it as a preset. And then when you load in your video and the first frame, maybe it's blurry or it's just not the one you want to work with, you can just import the preset and either the video without having to worry about the first frame. I'm going to try not go on a tangent about all the other new features, but also in extras, there is a discord now and I will put my own presets in there that you can download and mess with. But yeah, what I'll do is I'll put on screen some of the effects I got out of this tutorial 
with these other images. If you want to share any of your own presets or any of your own work, you are welcome to join the Discord and do that. If there's any other Ditherboy tutorials you want to see, let me know. If there are any other features for Ditherboy you want to see, please let me know as well. This isn't going to be the only update, there's going to be more updates. I'm going to try not to get ahead of myself and talk about the next updates, but yeah, there's more cool stuff coming and I really appreciate all the support, all the feedback and yeah, that's it. Thank you for the support and I will see you in the next video.